I'm Jamie Latour, and this is how to complete the Fire Temple in The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. So you've presumably made it to Goron City, knocked some sense into Yonobo, fought a three-headed volcano monster in a boss fight that's probably the closest to an ace combat mission a Zelda game has ever gotten, and ventured down into the depths within Death Mountain where you've stumbled upon the Fire Temple. Now since this is more or less the lava zone of Tears of the Kingdom, it's recommended that you have plenty of elixirs or food that will give you Flame Guard to protect you from the heat. You can purchase some protective armor within the city, although it is pretty pricey. The Flame Breaker armor isn't too bad at 700 rupees, so it's probably a good idea to at least get that. I'll let you in on a little spot to get some secret Flame Guard armor. Inside the Lizard's Burrow Cave, which is located here on the map in the area surrounding Death Mountain, use the map coordinates too if you want those, if you head all the way in, you'll find the chest containing the Varudania Divine Helmet. I wore this along with the Flame Breaker armor, and I never needed to use a single elixir or cooked food to deal with the heat. Now once you get to the Fire Temple, head inside, watch the little cutscene, and then interact with the Zonai Pedestal to create a fast travel point. You'll be informed that the gate is locked by five padlocks, so let's figure out how to open them up. From the fast travel point, let's head left. Kill the Zonai Construct enemy that's this way, and then hop onto one of these stone platforms in the lava to get across. You'll find fire hydrants that you can place and then whack to activate that will shoot out water that will create even more stone platforms. Glue a bunch of stone platforms together with Ultra Hand to create a bridge to get over this lava. Now we see some minecart tracks along with some minecarts with fans attached to the back. So it's pretty obvious what we're supposed to do here. Hop in a minecart, whack the fan, and let's go. Dinobo will become a strange projectile that you could fire from the front of vehicles. So shoot him at the switch ahead to change tracks and continue on. You'll eventually hit a roadblock and there will be a switch that you can hit to open that. But before we move on, let's head along here around the corner, and there will be a gloom-infested fireball spewing like-like. Kill it and collect the junk that it drops. Then you'll see some marbled rock that's blocking this way. There will be more hydrants that you can use to create stone platforms for the lava. And then you need to fire Yonobo at the marbled rock to smash through it. I kinda just laid some platforms in the lava and shot him and he hit the rock. But I believe you're supposed to make your own ramp using stone platforms or something. I don't know, it worked out for me. You'll find some bubbled hydrants in here that you can add to your inventory if you ever need a spare. And a giant gong. Aim Yonobo at it to kabong the gong, and that will open the first padlock. Alright, let's head back to our fan-powered minecart. I'm just gonna call them fan carts from now on. And let's keep rolling. Shoot Yonobo at the marbled rock that's in the way and head all the way to the end of this track. You may run into some Zonai constructs riding minecarts, but you could just fire Yonobo at them to get rid of them. There's a switch that you can hit to turn the cart around and then get back in, and there's another switch that you can aim Yonobo at to change tracks again, which will take you along the right path. You'll hit another roadblock, and you'll have to take out some gloomy magma-encrusted rock boys here. Now, go to the left, and cross this rickety bridge to find another fan cart, and a switch that will lower a track and raise a roadblock. Pluck the cart on the track, and head across. There's another bit of marbled rock over here that Yonobo can smash. There will also be another hydrant here spewing water and creating stone platforms. And you can put down another one if you want to make even more. What you're going to want to do is glue them all together to make another long bridge to cross to the other side where you'll fight a Zonai construct and find gong number two. Now, Gong 3 took a little bit of nonsense for me to find. Head back to the minecart you just used, and if you shoot an arrow at the switch across, it'll raise the track up to the next level. If you're low on arrows, there are quite a few chests in this temple that will contain bundles of 10 arrows, including one by the main entrance. Now, take that track up, and you'll just find a whole bunch of stuff. Defeat the Zonai construct enemy here, and you can hit this nearby pylon to activate an elevator that will take you back down to the first level.
level if you need that. Now, the track over here up to the next level is broken. But fortunately, there's some handy dandy rockets nearby. Create yourself a rocket cart with Ultra Hand and then rocket up to the fourth floor. There will be yet another Zonai Construct enemy for you to break apart. In this area, there's a couple of broken bridges. Now, it took a lot of trial and error, but I learned that you need to glue together this short bridge here. And it will create a ramp that you can shoot Yonobo up to break the ceiling above and cause a giant block to fall down that you can then climb up on and use Recall on to shoot back up to the top and lo and behold, there's gong number three. This took me two hours to figure out. You're welcome. Now the fourth gong somehow wound up being an even bigger mess than the third one, so bear with me here. Glide off of here where you just struck the third gong, back down to the area with the elevator and the rockets and all that junk. Here there are two switches that affect the tracks. Hit the one with the arrow pointing to the right, and then place a fan cart on the track and head across. Grab your cart and place it on the other track that's here. Head over to the next section and use your Nobo to smash through the marbled rock to reveal another switch which will let you get back to those two switches we just used. Now smack the switches until the track looks like this to take you up. Hop back in the cart to the left and head up that way. When you reach the end, there will be a Zonai construct and a chest containing 10 arrows, along with more fan cards. There's also another track here, so let's use that, and that will take you to the fifth floor, and you may ram into a Zonai construct riding another cart here, so take them out. Now let's head over here, and you'll find a bridge. And you'll notice that a part of the bridge is kind of broken. You can fall down through that broken bit to the area underneath the bridge to find another fan cart and a switch. Now hit that switch to lower the track and take the mine cart down to find the area with the fourth gong. I, I don't know if this is the optimal or correct way of finding this spot, but it's, it's how I found it. As for actually hitting the gong, use Shinobo on this slab that's acting as a ramp to hit the marbled rock to reveal a hydrant. That will start to form stone platforms, and you can use those to make an even steeper ramp to fire Yonobo at the gong with. Now from that ramp, that we just made. Look over and you'll see some marbled rock. Move the ramp over here and fire Yonobo at that. Now thankfully, getting up here is actually quite simple. And you can probably guess what we're gonna do because we've been doing it the whole time. Start grabbing that nearly endless supply of stone platforms and let's create another giant stone bridge. Carefully place your very long bridge, head on up, and then drop down the giant hole that's up here all the way to the bottom where you'll find the fifth gong. Now return back to the Zonai pedestal and interact with it to open up the gate to the Fire Temple's boss, Marbled Goma. Goma's legs are made of the same marbled rock that Yonobo's been breaking apart this whole time. So use him to shatter the legs and break Goma down. Then climb up on top and start whacking that giant eyeball that is very clearly the weak point. 
Just be careful because once it's had enough, it will knock you off and that will do a little bit of damage. Goma's main attacks are spitting marbled rocks that will eventually explode at you as well as trying to step on you. It's also got a butt stomp. Once you've annoyed it enough, which is at about halfway through its health bar, it'll start climbing along the ceiling and spitting even more exploding rocks at you. So use Shinobo to smash them if you get surrounded. As for hitting Goma up there, this arena is pretty round. So you should be able to fire Yonobo at the walls near Goma, and he should just roll up and take out its legs, causing it to fall down. Then just keep walloping the eyeball, and Goma should be a goner. After you beat it, you'll get a heart container, so make sure to pick that up. And then you'll get some backstory on Yonobo's ancestor, before permanently unlocking his ability, and then you'll be done with this friggin' temple. For more Tears of the Kingdom news and guides, check out thegamer.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.